Hey, it's Joel. 3D scanning is fantastic, and I found a really cool free app that lets you do it and export a model based on your face scan to help hold these to your face better. Let's get into it right here on 3D Printing Nerd. Uh, hey, before we get started, I just want to tell you something happened with my car. I found something that's free to fix it, and I'm going to tell you at the end of the video. Hey. Hey, welcome back. Uh, these sort of masks, you've been seeing a lot of these, no doubt. There's a lot of people that have to wear these when going outside. Uh, I do when I'm going to the post office to drop off face shields and whatnot. The issue with this mask, though, is that it doesn't conform to my nose. And you can see my glasses, they start to steam up. The issue is I was born with an incredibly large nose. Look, just look at it look at look at it i have a huge nose and i have big feet and so you know what that means i wear big socks there is an app though that works on your phone or on a lot of people's phone and it's from bellis 3d and it's quite interesting so it asks you to scan your face and then it will create a custom fitter for your face so let's let's do that let's do it right now so here we go it's uh it's got me in the, it's green, so, oh wait, wait. I'm gonna take off my glasses for this, just because scanning a face is difficult, right? Here we go, look at the camera. Turn left, turn to the middle, turn right, turn to the middle. Okay, the capture is completed. <laughs> it's me. Okay, I'm glad I took the glasses off. 3D scanning and glasses and transparent materials never work out too well, but look at that. It does say Bellis 3D on there, but I mean, you can zoom in. There's my eyes. Look at there's there's my giant nose, giant giant nose. But look at that. It actually got the underside of the nose okay. That's not too bad. So here's here's where the really cool part comes in. There's a button at the bottom that says mask fitter. Tap that, and then it brings up this and it talks about the mask and giving it a tighter fit. You can look at that on your own. I'm gonna hit next up above. The basic mask zero dollars to export the STL file for 3D printing. Standard I'll let you export it and add characters to it and premium for $2.99 gives you I don't know It looks like a, a way of holding it on better, but we're talking about no cost zero basic So I'm gonna tap that mask and then hit next and then it says to wait approximately 10 seconds. Okay success <laughs> Look at that <gasps> Look at that Wow, and and here's here's where I'm really excited about look at how close it is gets to where my nose interfaces with my face. That's always the problem, right? It's that part. And you can get those metal clips that hold stuff there, but those, I don't have any of those. And so I can use 3D printing to fix that, right? Here we go. Look at this. Here, hide face, better. So it does say Bellus 3D on there. It's got four hooks to hold it onto the face. That doesn't look too bad. Wow, okay, and so 3D print, it takes you to, oh, they have partners that'll 3D print them. Okay, but export, if I hit that button, there's a file name and I can export that to various things on my phone. So I'm gonna export this to my computer, slice it, and then get it ready for the Prusa SL1 resin 3D printer. Here's my Prusa machine, here it is. This is the SL1 right here. So to get this ready, uh, I'm gonna open this up. I remove that, I can do that. So I'm gonna to go to print, and there's my mask fitter Joel. I'm gonna tap on that, swipe there, and then I'm gonna hit print. It'll take a few hours. We'll come back, and then we'll see how it's done. Three hours later. Hey, the print's done. Let's get it off the build plate, wash it, cure it, and see if it fits over my face, and especially my nose. Prusa machine is done. First thing we need to do is lift the lid and I've built my shelves so that the lid can lift up no problem. There's the build plate right there. I'm going to use some of some of this right here just to kind of scrape off some of that resin that's on the top. There's this little piece that fits around here. So with that it won't drip onto the machine if I need to take it off and uh, bring it out over here. I'll unscrew this. Here we go. This part right here, I printed. It's on Prusa printers. Here's the cool thing. So if I grab this, put this there, and then put that just, oh, come on. <laughs> there we go. It puts it at an angle. Oh, hello. It puts it at an angle, and that means it should drip off whatever's left. 
all the parts that I was touching aren't resin parts. So I wasn't too worried about putting on a glove, but now that I'm gonna be removing parts and touching isopropyl alcohol and all that, I'm gonna get some gloves on. Had to. At this point, what I need to do is get my isopropyl alcohol bucket. It's got a stirrer on the inside with a magnet on it, which interfaces with this over here. So then this part has a little, I don't know if you can see that, that grabs onto the build plate. So if I take this off and then it essentially just push that down, build plate goes on there, just like that. And then this gets submerged like so. I put it over here in this machine. I close the lid. The first selection right there, start washing. So what's really cool is there's a sensor inside that detects the buckets there. I don't have to do anything. I just have to click right here. And then a countdown timer starts. Inside what you can't see, there is the magnetic stir in the bottom, stirring the isopropyl alcohol around, completely getting into every part of that model and washing the excess off the build plate. While that's washing, we can take care of our SL1. So we can remove this and set it aside for next time. We can take off this piece right here and set it aside for next time. This print right here, uh, it's, it's like a cover. Just kind of keeps dust and debris out of that. The hood should, but it's a neat little cover. And let's see, does it go this way? Yeah, there we go. Fits on there. I've got places to put my thumbs. And then I can close that. Just for now. While that's washing, I thought I'd show you these parts. I, I 3D printed the parts for a, a TIE fighter or TIE Interceptor, or uh, whatever it's called. But look at that, that was printed on the SL1. The detail's pretty good. I printed it in half scale, and I'm gonna be taking the supports off and finishing it, but uh, that's not too shabby. That's not too shabby at all. I hope you're Star Wars fans. If you like the idea of seeing this on the channel, leave me a comment down below with your favorite scene from a Star Wars movie. Five, four, three, two, one, done. Oh, and it beeps. That's nice. It beeps. Let's take a look. There we go. That's what that looks like. There's still some resin bits up here. So here's the process that I do. First, I'm going to hit the button. I'm going to take that off. Then I'm going to take this and I'm going to find uh, a little area of support that might come up easy. Slide it under and just like that, remove the piece. There it sits. One thing to remember, this build plate was just submerged in isopropyl alcohol, and if you put it back in here, no resin's gonna stick to it. So make sure you go grab a paper towel and get rid of all of the isopropyl alcohol and the bits of resin that were uncured. <laughs> that's good to go. I mean, obviously we'll have to take that off next time we print, but that's fine. Let's take a look at this. I think this looks pretty darn good. Supports are minimal in fact some of them are just popping off right there okay so this is what's going to have to go around my face obviously i can't do that yet i need to cure it man it looks good though it does say bellas 3d on it that's fine obviously if you pay the money you can customize it but at this point what we need to do is get the isopropyl alcohol off of this and i think that a good way to do that you can use a water rinse you can uh, put it outside in the sun to evaporate uh, i like to shake Sometimes I'll use a paper towel. So there's different schools of thought on this. And the reason being, if you have a highly detailed model and you want to get the isopropyl alcohol off of it before you cure it, um, you can use uh, an air compressor or like I said, the sun to evaporate it or whatever. The problem is anything that's left in a nook or a cranny is going to cause the resin not to cure. But for something like this, the detail isn't as important as just its ability to stay together. So I think I got enough of it off there. Let's get it over there. Curing is pretty easy. You set it on here. And because it doesn't detect the bucket, it says start drying and curing, which means I just, well, I need to close this first. And then I can hit this button. And there it goes. A countdown starts three minutes. A few moments later. It's drying and it's curing. You can actually cause that temperature right there to go up. Prior to that, you can preheat, and that's actually nice if you, are, uh, if you have this in a cold location and you need to preheat your resin. But um, right now it'll heat as it's drying. It's gonna go for three minutes. 
there are UV lights in there. If I lift this up, the UV lights stop. It's all cured. Let's take a look. It's a little bit warm in there, which is, which is great. Oh, and here it is. Look at that. That's cured. Supports for something like this. Just come on, just like that. Wow. <laughs> That's fantastic. Those came off super easy. Okay, it's got a little bit of flex to it. I think it's because it's still a little warm. But now the real test, we're gonna see if this fits on my face. <laughs> this is a resin print. And normally you wouldn't think of putting this obviously near your eyes, your mouth or whatever, but this is cured. This can actually be treated and painted and whatnot. Uh, so I don't think printing this in resin is a, is a bad idea. I think as long as it is cured and as long as it's painted or covered or something, I think that's a long-term safety thing. But uh, for something like this, I'm gonna set it down and then, did I do that right? I don't know if I did that right. So first, here's the fit test. And obviously uh, my nose, quite large, so let's see. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> Makes me look weird on camera, but uh, here, take a look, like right there. And right there, look at that, it actually hugs it. Okay, so this is a success. The face scan worked, the model worked. Now what we need to do is test it with a mask. So that goes over like that. I try to pinch it here. I don't know if you can see, my glasses do steam up. I don't have the elastic bands to fit this around my head. I know I can try to interface them with this, but I'm just gonna hold it against my face, against this mask with pressure to see what it does. So if we're like this, okay. Okay, okay. So it worked. <laughs> it worked. This is great. We used an application on our phone and made this for free and then printed it out on a 3D printer that we had. Obviously, not everybody has a resin printer. I, I've seen these printed with FDM machines. Not everybody has the compatible phone to run this app, but every, everybody should have a friend, I think. I don't know. There's, there's going to be ways to get this done, but... I really, really like this. A, because this steams up my glasses and I really don't like that. I can go without my glasses, but then I'm just more funny looking. So it's better to do that because then I can see better as well. But also this provides better protection. Uh, it, it's gonna take that mask and it's really gonna hold it to your face. And uh, here's what's really cool. So this is a technology. It used just a couple seconds to scan your face and it gave you a model that fits the contours of your face incredibly well so why can't we now adapt this for other things maybe maybe custom facial things what if i don't know for cosplay what if someone could custom fit a certain part to your face using an app or what if scanning data from apps like this could be able to then make for more custom parts that can be 3D printed i don't know the future is amazing let's be honest i don't know if i've mentioned this before but I'm using something called automatic. It's a thing that plugs into the port on your car and then I use it to track mileage for business purposes and it also reminds me where I park my car and it can tell me when there are engine codes or something that's going wrong. The problem was automatic is going out of business. I got the email and I'm really sad about that. So I'm working with Nanda on this. It's very similar. They, they'll send it to you if you pay for shipping. So it's free. It doesn't have the entire feature set, feature set of automatic, but uh, I like that it's free. You just pay for shipping. I've tested it and it's been working great. It'll track mileage and it'll tell me about the engine codes that happen. And obviously nothing in this life is free, right? But what their goal is, uh, is to get this into as many hands as possible. And then if you really like their service, you might buy the extras that they can offer, like tire pressure monitoring and cameras and stuff like that. They would all interface with the app. But this is from Nanda. It works. I've been testing it on my wife's car. It's going to be my automatic replacement. Automatic, I'm really sad to see you go, but I'm glad these guys stepped up. So there'll be a link in the description. Like I said, it's free. This piece is free. You pay for shipping. That seems to be the common theme. 
and then they send it to you and then you put it in and you get the app and it works for free and there are extras that you can buy and subscribe to if you want but the base functionality for free works great i track the mileage of my wife's car uh, it gives me parking reminders uh, we did have an engine code it told me about that and it tracks the trips for business purposes but hey free for shipping that ain't too bad and it's really great to track stuff especially if you have a home-based business and you need to run around to do things it's good to track that mileage you can write that off that's from nanda they're not paying me to say this i thought it was cool so i worked with them to raise awareness well Look, we've come to the end, and if you've made it this far, you're really awesome. I must admit, this is an incredibly practical print, and we did it with stuff we've already had. Like I said, if you don't have the stuff, a resin machine or an FDM machine, or the type of phone or device that this application works on, I'm sorry, maybe find someone close to you in a safe way and get it done. But look at this, we've made something practical, something that will help, and that's the goal of 3D printing, right? To make the things that normally couldn't be made in any other way. So the future is exciting, the future is bright, and I can't wait to be more of a part of it. Well, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. But hey, thanks for making this far, because you did, and you are awesome. Don't forget to hug each other more, and from a safe distance, High five. <laughs> <sighs>